My name is Julian Biega. Uh, we're a dairy farmer here on Harrington Road on the lower floodplains of the Manning. Um, one of eight islands that are in the area. This is Manbow Island. So the way we would like to try and farm here is that we, um, because we've got grandchildren, um, we like to see that the farm is um, in good order if they want to take over in years to come. We are custodials of this land, so I've got a, two sensitive neighbours. I've got an oyster farmer down the, down the river, and up the river I've got uh, the Cattleye wetland. It's not just about me, it's about everyone else as well. Everyone's got to have a fair go, um, and that's what we're trying to do, is just make sure that what we're doing is not detrimental to everybody else with the um, natural manures that we're getting from the cows that are producing. We are now learning to handle that and that's a whole new ball game um, because it's nitrogen rich, potassium rich. What we did before we, um, the system we've got going now, we managed the effluent on farm not very well. So now we've got an opportunity to do a better job. We weren't able to use it to its full potential before because we didn't have the system. It was like trying to um, spread fertiliser with a teaspoon. It was just so painful. And now we have a better system and we've got better equipment to use. We're finding, oh gee, we wasted a lot of time and money. The whole thing with, with daring is you have to look at some way of making that profit and, and you've got to start questioning everything you do. Are you spending too much money on electricity or can you put solar in to help offset that? How can I reuse that water again after I hose the yard down? And challenging yourself and, and what you're doing and what you did for for all these years and going, okay, I think I can do this a little bit better or I think there's another way of doing this. Years ago, we used to multi-plow the paddock ripped it, we turned it back into a powder, and it took so long for it to recover, it was just incredible. And you think, I'm not doing this right. I've using a European practice for a non-European country, hoping to grow mega amounts of feed, and all I'm doing is trashing it. And it takes so long for this land to recover, back to um, where the cows are walking on top of the ground and not under it. Yeah, it's so, it's so wrong what we did. Now we, we do very little on that. We don't, um, plows are sitting up there going rusty, don't want them. At the end of each morning, um, we've milked the cows, we go through and we hose down um, all the yard and all the effluent off the yard and clean the bales up um, as required takes about six cubic metres of water to do that, which is about 6,000 litres. Um, that now goes down through into a, um, a gravel trap, takes out the big gravel, then it goes into a, a fibrous solid trap that takes out most of the fibre. Um, we have a little aerator on it, then it's pumped across to the big holding tank, and then um, that holds a 0.8 of a megalitre, or 800,000 litres and then we pump that out onto the paddocks. So it's a huge difference to what we were doing before. We can't go down because it's less than a metre of topsoil and you're in, we just didn't have the topsoil from the dig any hole, so they just had to put something above. It's new, I think this is the only one of its kind in New South Wales. And then you look at it and it's just go, oh, it's a buck ground swimming pool. Council was saying, yeah, we, we can help you, just tell us what you want. And we didn't know what we want, so then we got uh, consultants in and they said, well, this is what you should be doing. So it was in a, a partnership with consultants and council and um, and at the end of the day, I probably had the final say on what we were doing or where it was going to go. So it was a good partnership, actually. Um, and we were good people to work with. Um, in my paddocks, we've just got, been through one of the driest winters and springs, and we've got paddocks that we've couple of paddocks that we've planted and they will survive and we'll be able to make silage off them which meant we haven't wasted all that money on dead sea. The effluent was going to the edge of the wetland, some people like to call it, and it was filtered into there by the um, kaikia and the grasses that were growing around it. At the moment it's not, they aren't going anywhere near that. Bird life has just taken off, we've had 
36 black swans flying in the neat now, wide grass paddocks. The amount of mullet that's running up and down our drains is phenomenal. I can get my granddaughters up here and show them what it looks like. Um, and what the place could look like or used to look like before we all came.